Well, that's all, folks. Welcome back to NFL Now, presented by IKEA. Tom Brady walking away from the NFL after that Monday night playoff loss against the Dallas Cowboys. So it'll usher in a new era of Tampa Bay Buccaneers football. Our Judy Batista sat down with head coach Todd Bowles to talk about Brady and the state of the Bucs. When you lose a quarterback like Tom Brady, that changes everything, I would think. How does that change the, the role of a head coach? Do you now have to be more involved in the offense maybe than you were? No, no more than you were. It's more or less of making sure everyone's on the same page and know how to play. When you replace a player of that magnitude, first of all, you don't replace them. You know, you lose aura, you lose the expectation of being great. That doesn't mean you can't be great. You know, you just have to do it more as a team. You know, we did it as a team when he was there, but, you know, he was such a great player and a great person that you focus all on that. And now that that is gone, you know, the perception is that everything else is gone, and really it isn't. We have a lot of good players on our team on both sides of the ball. We have some pieces to fill in, but we have a lot of good football players on our team, and we just have to understand that and not go with the so-called outside narrative and do what we have to do to win ball games. Listen, I'm never going to be Tom Brady. There's a reason he has won so many Super Bowls. He's the greatest of all time. There's no doubt about that. Um, I'm not going to try and be Tom. I'm going to be me. That's what's gotten me to this point. Uh, we're going to do it differently, but that's what makes this league so special. What made Baker attractive enough for you to bring him in? I like Baker, like, when he was coming out, you know. We kind of hit it off when I was with the Jets. I went down to Oklahoma, and we had this vibe between us. And, you know, not to say he was had the strongest arm and everything else, but he's, he's a leader. Uh, he has great understanding of the football game he knows where to go with the football and he has moxie and he, he's one of them guys he's a guy's guy the players love to be around him and they will fight for him because he's a winner and he's won on a lot of different levels so you like that about him coming in i thought the way we were trying to run our offense this year the style of offense we were trying to run i thought he was a perfect fit for it so between him and trask i have no doubt that one of them would come out and be successful in this offense. How will you measure success for the Bucks this year? The goal hasn't changed. Success is obviously winning the division first, then doing damage in the playoffs and trying to win the Super Bowl. You know, anything short of that, we don't, we don't ever look at it as, okay, we're starting over, we're trying to do this, and we're going to build up and do that. We want to start playing good football in September, and we want to start playing great football in December, and you measure success that way. That's Todd Bowles with our Judy Batista. Bowles hired one year ago today, Sarah Walsh, as head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we saw that they try to keep the band together for a couple years after winning the Super Bowl. Maybe it's a youth movement coming. You recently had a conversation with general manager Jason Light. What's their draft strategy heading into next month's draft, Sarah? So here's what they're up against. The Bucks have the 19th overall pick in the draft. They've got nine total draft picks, but six of those picks come in the fifth round or later. Clearly, every general manager would love to have every draft pick hit, and it doesn't work that way. And given the fact that the Buccaneers can't spend a lot of money in free agency, it wasn't something they're able to do. At one point, they were $57 million over the cap. I asked Jason Light, their general manager, hey, I know you want to have every draft pick work out, but is there a little bit of an added pressure this year because you need guys to come in and contribute because you can't go out and buy guys and put them on this team? And he said their draft strategy isn't going to change really really because of the position they're in. And what he means by that is he said that they're in the business of developing players. So when they look at these guys that they might take, they are not going to take someone based on the fact that we think that he can put him, be out on the field immediately. That's just not how they're going to look at it. They're going to look at what this guy's upside potentially could be, and they're not going to get drawn into the fact of the situation, what they're looking at right now for the Buccaneers. And then he referenced Seattle and the amazing draft class that Seattle had last year when it comes to Tariq Woolen and Kobe Bryant and Kenneth Walker. And he said, yeah, what Seattle did, that is incredible, but that just doesn't happen every year. You just don't see draft classes like that. So I think they're realistic. I think that they will be patient and do the right thing as opposed to jumping on guys because they think, hey, we could plug it in and make a run. They've got to be really smart about how they make these picks, and, and Jason has made no bones about that, but it's not going to alter the strategy that they've employed for years and years, Omar. Yeah, and their admiration for Seattle didn't stop at their draft class last year, of course, bringing in the Seahawks quarterbacks coach, Dave Canales, as their new 
offensive coordinator. A lot to look forward to next month at the draft for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Sarah Walsh, I'm sure, will be all over it. Thank you, Sarah.